Well, good afternoon YouTubers. I trust you're all well. We're well here. All's good apart from the weather. <laughs> it's been just cloudy, overcast all the time. So no real sun. Pond temps at about 19 degrees, which it was at just over 20, nearly 21. Since it's been overcast and not much sun, it's just dropped off that little bit. But everything's good. Koi are all good, pond's all good. I wish I could say the same about the bog filter. <laughs> it is not happy at all. We'll take a look at that, we'll go around and take a look. It's not doing too well, I have to say. I've left my fence in the way really, but you can see what's happening. Look at that, I'm proud of that. I grew that, one of my better efforts. As you can see, the bog filter is a bit ill. <laughs> it's not, not well at all. I think the problem is that I don't think the water is actually flowing at the top there. I think all the flowing is being done down the bottom, the flow of water. So I'm going to have to modify that. I think what I'm going to do is take it out again, yet again, and cut it down because it is quite deep. And it's a good depth, it's over 30 centimetres. I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter so that it's flowing through all of the gravel. Like I say, I think we've got all the flow on the bottom and not a lot at the top. You mind your own business, they're growing. They're starting to grow well, but the others aren't doing too good. They definitely look ill, so I'm going to take that lot out, take the gravel out, cut it down, cut it down about, I don't know, 10 centimetres, so that the flow is actually going through all of the gravel. The one yon end, I mean, it's shot up, it's gone mad. It's actually going into the buddleia, but it's not green, it's yellow. So I don't think they're getting the nutrients they want, or you gardeners will probably be able to tell me. My idea at the moment is just to uh, make it a little bit shallower, so it's not so deep, so the actual water flow is going through the plants. That's all I can think it'll be, because they're not doing too well at all, they're nearly white. So they are definitely not happy. But like I say, the Mind Your Own Business is it's doing quite well. I don't know whether we can get in and see to show you. But a modification is definitely needed. All you out there with a the bog filter, you'll be able to tell me probably. If I can get it lowered so that the flow is actually... Because we've got a decent flow through it. You can see it coming out there. That's not a bad flow through it. It's a good rate. I mean, it's not a huge bog filter, so I wouldn't want too much of the thought. That's the plan at the moment. I'm going to take it out and get it cut down. Cut it down by about a third. That's the plan. If there's anybody out there that knows anything about bog filters, let me know what you think. But they've gone from a green to a horrible yellowy colour, so they are not happy. Koi are all good. They're doing well. I did actually treat the pond with uh, cloverleaf. Blanket answer, I gave it a treat of that, it's killed most of it off, it's just bits that's floating about now. The bottom, I don't know whether you'll see the bottom, there's a lot of glare, let's try going down the other end. There's some food on the bottom there they haven't eaten yet, some sinking food I put in. But down there, there is patches on the bottom still, a lot of it's come off, a lot of the stringy long stuff that was being a uh, complete problem we've got rid of that it's just the short growing stuff but a lot of that looks dead i did give it hoovering out i will give it another one because by the looks of it we need one and see how we go from there now <laughs> i did say to the wife what i want to do is get one or two sort of japanesey bits to put around the pond so i got myself a buddha and i got that little uh, i forget what they call them now it's gone help me my mind but I got one of them anyway. And the wife came home the other night and said, I've got you another statue for your pond. She was ever so pleased, which <laughs> it's a nice statue, but it's not very Japanesey. <laughs> but there you go. Bless her, she did try. But it is a nice little statue, I must say. And of course she had to put it on the side of the pond. But there you go. She tried, bless her. But I did actually go to the garden centre 
and look what I bought myself a little maroon icer so I'm going to see if I can kill that now I suppose <laughs> it's, the other one hasn't done too well it's been in there for about a week and a half now and I think it's done for I don't think we're going to get a lot out of that I don't know whether you guys can see there's nothing happening at all much I did think we were starting to get a little bit of a sign because I did see some buds coming on places like that. Don't know how well you guys can see that, but they look to be dead, dying or whatever. They just don't look to be doing the business at the moment. But everything else is growing well, everything's coming out now. It's just that it's nearly June and we really haven't had any sun much. We've had a little bit now and again, a couple of days maybe, but cloudy, very cloudy. So, like I say, my next project is to get that bog filter out, cut it down and get the flow chain somehow on it. So it's going through the plants and we'll have another go and see what we can do. Round the side here, my ferns are doing really well. I've taken all the, of last year's leaves off now. So this is all the new growth that's showing. I cut all the old ones off and they're doing really well. Quite pleased with them. This is the slowest but it's coming. It's got a lot of new leaves on it. But the one I actually thought I'd killed was this one. And it's really thriving. It's really doing well. Chucking loads of new leaves up. In the field house, i just put the light on. All's going well in here. Well pleased with the back of shower. Well pleased with that. Everything else is going well, the upflow and the protein skim is all going well. The RDF, as you know, I don't do a lot to that, I just leave it. <laughs> it just does its own thing. I mean, you don't clean these things out, so there's not a lot to be done in there. But it's going well, bless it, it does a fantastic job. Best thing I've ever put on my pond, to be quite honest. But yeah, all's good at the moment. Okay, that's the plants out. I wasn't too worried about the others, but I have put my baby tears or mind your own business in a bucket for now. So I've got that in there, keeping it nice and wet. So now it's a matter of shut it down, change the inflow and get the gravel out. Then we're into some major surgery. So I'll press on, press on regardless as they say. Okay guys. I might be a bit breathless, but we've got the gravel out. Boy, I didn't realise how much gravel was in there. <laughs> but it's all out and it's all disconnected, so it's now just a matter of a quick clean out with those and get it in the workshop and start some amputations. So let's press on. Okay, the job so far. I've actually got it cut down. It was about 12 inches. 30 centimeters and I've dropped it down to 8 inches so we've got an 8 inch filter now all I want is a little stream passing through with the plant sat in it so I think the problem was it was too deep before but instead of having the pieces to support the sides that go across as you can see I've put wood around the outside that'll help support it that'll keep it straight so that's give it the bit of support that it needs and plus once I get it either painted or stained this will look quite nice instead of seeing the PP the grey PP polypropylene um, I think that'll look a lot better as well so that's got that done I've got to take it off now and just make sure it's all painted and waterproof and then we can start thinking about getting it back in okay well it's very overcast here and looks like it's going to rain any minute so this will be quick <laughs> I've got the base in the base is all in and level now so I'm just waiting for the paint to dry on the wood now that uh, actually surrounds the bog filter and as soon as that's dry I can start putting it back together and then get it out here and plumb it in so it's just a matter of waiting for the paint now until we get it all sorted but the base is in and level well what I have been asked to explain in this video is just how I have my filter system and how I have it connected up. I've been asked that several times so what I will do is just try to explain how I've got it all connected and how it all works. So if we go to the pond, in the pond 
down there somewhere there's a little bit of glare on there I do apologize but down there's the bottom drain I do also have a side pickup as well which I'm not sure if you'll see is there which I used to run more in the winter so that I didn't take the warmer water from the bottom of the pond but now the pond's heated I don't have to use that so much but there is another outlet there that they join up to I'll show you that in a second so we come underground and we come to this drain here so I'll whip the top off that and just give you a quick look in there so from the bottom drain we come across and into this manhole here and there's two three inch pipes there one comes from the top feed of the pond and the lower one comes from the bottom drain now I have a gate valve on each that was so that I used to be able to shut the top one off in the summer and shut the bottom one off and open the top one up in the winter just so I was taking the water from the top of the pond I wasn't taking the warmer water from the bottom of the pond they join together they join up just after this underground and it comes along up the garden and to here now in here I have my sea filter this is like a pre-filter takes all the algae and rubbish out before it actually gets to my filter system so if I whip the top off a lot of you have seen this before this is my sieve the water comes in here through a gate valve now never ever fit a gate valve unless you can get at it to maintain it that means you can take the four bolts out take this section out and replace the seals and replace this if you have to the trouble with the ones I've got on the bottom drain once they were fitted I didn't realize I couldn't get at them properly so I'm stuck with them and they leak as all gate valves will in time but there you go that's just one of them things anyway the water passes through there into my pump I've got my pond pump down there it's a Jubeo 30,000 litre an hour pump very flow that comes out the side underneath up along this section here so I'll just pop that back put that back on shut that down so now along the bottom there the bottom pipe goes along and it actually branches off so that there is a bypass to that so that I can have it flowing round and through the heater or I can have it flowing up and back straight into the filled house without going through the heater now the majority of the water goes through the heater the excess water that makes too much flow passes through the bypass so it's getting that's getting two-thirds of it and that's getting a third of it basically so two-thirds of it is going through the heater and from there this pipe here is where it goes into the actual filled house so we'll go in the filled house and carry on from there okay in the filled house this is where it actually comes into the filled house it comes in 50 mil two inch up and splits into a T or a swept T that is actually shouldn't be up there that's just come off a little bit but uh, there's two pipes that come round the back of the moving bed round the back of the RDF and they come up here one and one the other side too so both of these go straight into my RDF right so inside the RDF it's a little bit dark down there but there is the two inlets coming into this side which is commonly called the dirty side which is where all the dirty water comes in I mean most of you will know how an RDF works but if there is one or two out there that don't the water comes into the into the uh, RDF into the drum itself here which is separated by a rubber seal so no dirty water can flow straight in here it flows into the drum this mesh is a 60 micron mesh so the water has to flow 
through this mesh and this is what they call the clean side I don't know if you can see that very well down there but that's the clean water that's been filtered this is your mechanical filtration the drum itself triggers about once every hour three quarters of an hour to an hour what we have here there's a pump underneath that pumps water from the clean side through this bar and on there there are four jets they blast water at the mesh so once the drum goes into a cleaning cycle the drum turns the jets strike up pumping water at the mesh the dirt that's collected on the mesh is blasted off by the jets into this channel this channel runs the full length underneath that mesh it runs the whole length under there the dirt that is taken off the mesh goes into this channel and that goes to waste that doesn't return to your pond at all this is why RDFs are so good there's no dirt kept in the filter at all it's all removed instantly basically and at the back you will see I have my UV light now a UV light in an RDF serves two purposes number one as the water flows by it from your pond it kills any algae bloom algae bloom is what causes green water in ponds this is why everybody has a UV light that kills off the algae bloom and also with the UV light shining onto the mesh the other side it stops any buildup of biofilm that can form on the mesh it kills the biofilm off basically and that keeps your mesh nice and clean I haven't cleaned that mesh in ages and that UV light just keeps it nice and clean so that's all the water from the pond actually going through the RDF from there this is the two pipes coming out of the RDF one two they both go straight into the moving bed and this one this side actually tees off I've got a sweat tee there that tees off and goes round and up here which goes to my backy shower so that tee off feeds the backy shower any surplus water as it's on a tee goes to the moving bed the other side just goes straight to the moving bed so in the moving bed I've got 150 160 liters of media that's in there circulating 24 7 that's the bacterial part of the filtration system one of them the other one is the shower the backy shower the RDF is obviously the mechanical side of the filter system so from there the moving bed I've actually got down the bottom here a bulkhead into the moving bed or a tank connector into the moving bed with strainers on it there's three strainers on that and that comes round and into the upflow filter here so on the bottom of the upflow filter I've got a 10,000 litre an hour pump that is drawing water from the moving bed into my upflow filter so that it goes through the upflow filter that's taking a good easy half of what water is flowing into my moving bed it then comes out of the upflow filter down and into the protein skimmer it flows up and into the protein skimmer which is obviously not working at the moment into the protein skimmer maintains that water level that actually then comes out at the bottom round the back and joins up with the outlet on the actual moving bed so that takes what water it wants from the moving bed but any surplus water drains out through the two filter cages there so anything that's not going to the actual upflow filter goes out them two and the outlet joins up at the back there on a T which takes the water from the upflow filter so the outflow from my actual backy shower comes out and across 
it does actually go outside and join up to the same pipe as the moving bed and the upflow filter and protein skimmer. So all three join up to a three inch pipe which then returns it back to the pond and there you go guys, that's how my filter system is connected and works. So I hope that's helped one or two of you out a little bit. That's how I have it all connected up. What I forgot to mention was I've got the brolly up for the koi because it's quite sunny here at the moment. But underneath there I have my skimmer which I've shown you all before. The actual outflow on the skimmer is across there. You can just see it going in. That's drawing water all the time, 24-7. It goes through a filter basket with a pump in it and that pumps the water up into a pressure filter that then pumps the water round and into the bug filter. Well, that's how it all works. Okay, the bug filter's in and I've got water flowing through it. So it all looks good at the moment. It'll all depend on once we get the stone in just how things perform but I'm liking it at the moment nice little layer of water there what's that about three inches deep so we've got five inches of stone on top that's uh, room to bury it and room for the roots to dangle in the water that's my theory and I'm sticking to it <laughs> so we'll start adding a bit of stone and see how we go I just want to give my mate Phil at Telford Koi Pond a shout out if I may. Bless him, he's trying to get to 2,000 subscribers and he's very close. So if any of you guys watching aren't subscribed to Phil's channel, it'd do him a big favour if you could just pop along there. He turns some really good videos out. He's got an absolutely awesome pond and an awesome setup. But if you could pop along there and subscribe, it really would help him out. He's trying to hit the 2,000 subscriber mark. So do me a favour, pop along there and subscribe to Phil's channel. You won't regret it. And it is free. Well, guys, have we got a windy day here today. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It's really blowing here at the moment. So if there's any problems with the sound, I do apologise. But I am on my camera, so it shouldn't be too bad. But we're all in, done, up and running. So I've got it all in. I've got the gravel in. I've gone for bigger gravel. The flow is a lot better, I must say. And this end, as you can see, I've put some egg crate across and just gone straight in to the actual tank connectors. No pipe on there at all. And as you saw when it was in the shed, the other end just comes straight in across that end with slots in the pipe so the water is travelling from one end to the other through the gravel and I've got a nice bit of gravel on top that's all dry which is good that will stop any algae build up or gnats getting in it or mosquitoes putting the lava in there that should stop all that so now all it's down to is getting some more plants to put in it. I've got my uh, baby tears in there as you can see or the mind your own business I've got that planted in there but that is working a lot better now as you know I cut it down to eight inches it's eight inches high now so I'll get some plants in it and we'll see how things go but that's it I'm afraid that brings us to the end of another video so all it leaves me to say is you all take care stay safe thanks for watching and happy ponding. <laughs>